Hi everybody and welcome back to part two of my Altec Lansing Speaker Roundup. Today we have the Hydra Wave, the Hydra Blast, and the Hydra Boom. This is the Altec Lansing Hydra Wave. It's fairly compact, weighs less than two pounds, and is pretty tough. Behind this metal speaker grill, we have dual one and a half inch four watt drivers for a total of eight watts of power. On the back of the HydroWave, you can see three one and a half inch passive radiators. Now, Altec Lansing says there are four, so the fourth one must be between the two drivers up front. Just a quick tour of the product. The silver part seems to be a high impact plastic. The coral colored is a hard rubber. The speaker grills are metal. The controls are consistent with standard Bluetooth speaker controls. This last one here is your party sync button. That seems to be a feature that is overtaking the traditional TWS true wireless stereo mode. The party sync allows you to connect 100 plus infinite hydrowave speakers together. They will all play simultaneously and be controlled by the host speaker. There is a rubber plug on the bottom and under that is the charging port and the reset switch. And here is a quarter inch threaded mount. They, you, you could use that with just about any standard quarter inch mount, like a, a GoPro mount or, or a tripod mount or whatever, but they do include what I'm calling a handlebar mount. You can put your handlebar in there and put that in the, the mount hole. You get a carabiner, a USB-C charging cord, and something that I don't think I've ever seen before. This is a bungee cord that you can attach to these metal parts here and create your own handle. Altec Lansing has certified this speaker as IP67 waterproof. I never take those claims at face value. I will always test them myself. And I threw this in some water and noted that it did float. So I weighted it down and submerged it in water for 30 minutes and pulled it out to verify that yes, the buttons still work. It sounded absolutely fine. Certified waterproof. There are no RGB lighting effects on this speaker, but if you would like some more color, it also comes in blue, black, and fuchsia. I don't know how many people actually use hands-free calling with their Bluetooth speakers, but I always test it. And the person I talked to said that I sounded good. Different than my phone, but good. There is only a 400 milliamp hour battery in the HydroWave. That will charge in about three hours. Altec Lansing claims that you will get up to 12 hours of playback, and that depends upon what you're listening to and the volume at which you're listening to it. I think that is fairly reasonable. In my own testing, I found that I wouldn't listen to the speaker at more than 60% volume anyway, just because of distortion problems. And there is a significant amount of rattle in the speaker, it doesn't rattle if it's not on, so it's just during playback to the point where I really didn't enjoy listening to this. So I'm going to rate this speaker a 2 out of 5. This is the Altec Lansing Hydroblast 2.0. It feels very solid in your hand. It's a combination of high-impact plastic, hardened rubber, and metal speaker grills. It is always my preference that a speaker manufacturer will put contrasting colored ink on the buttons just to make them easier to identify and use. Altec Lansing has chosen not to do that, but the buttons themselves are fairly standard Bluetooth controls. One difference is this party sync button. This will allow you to connect 100 plus Hydro Blast speakers together for a party you won't soon forget. This Starburst button allows you to choose the RGB mode. While small, I think the RGB is quite effective and almost makes the speaker look like it's floating on top of a sea of light. I did not know what to think about this when I saw it. The instructions called it a QI charging pad. So I put this on top just to see if the Hydro Blast would start charging, and it didn't. 
And then I realized, no, it's not to charge the speaker. It's to use the speaker to charge my phone. So I put my phone on top. I had to wiggle it around a little bit, but then it started charging. So that works. As for mounting options, the Hydroblast has a sturdy plastic ring and they give you a carabiner to hang it from. They include a quarter inch mounting hole. This would be compatible with most tripods, GoPro accessories, and they also include a handlebar mount. On the bottom is an angled resting plate. This will allow you to slightly elevate and focus the speaker output. The bottom plate also serves as a magnetic mount. This is not the strongest magnet I've ever tested, but it's fairly strong and I don't think you'll have any trouble. Altec Lansing certifies that the Hydroblast is IP67 waterproof. I never take that for granted. I always test it for myself. I noted that the speaker does float, but once I forced it to be submerged for 30 minutes, I was able to pull the speaker out. All the buttons still worked. It still sounded great. I would certify it waterproof as well. I did test the hands-free calling features and the person I called said I sounded good. The HydroWave has dual 10 watt, two inch drivers and a two inch passive radiator for a total of 20 watts. Altec Lansing claims 20 hours of playback on this speaker. Of course, that is affected by the volume that you're using and the type of music that you're listening to. However, I do think that that is fairly reasonable because I did not want to turn the speaker up over 50% anyway, just because I was starting to get distortion. I also experienced resonance frequency issues when I was listening to music with deep bass. If you don't know what that means, it basically means that the speaker enclosure itself will start to buzz during certain frequencies. I think the speaker, the drivers themselves could handle it, but it's just certain frequencies make this thing vibrate. It doesn't sound great, but if you aren't listening to deep bass, like uh, techno or, or rap or something like that, then you should be fine. This would be fine for just rock music or pop music. Just anything but the deep, deep bass music would be fine. I am going to give the Hydroblast a three out of five star rating. I think it sounds good up to about 50% volume and I do like the feature list, but I just feel like they under delivered on what they intended to do. This is the Altec Lansing Hydroboom 2.0. It's four pounds and built like a tank. When you hold the Hydroboom 2.0 for yourself, you can feel the strength in the impact resistant plastic, the hardened rubber surfaces and the metal speaker grills. Altec Lansing claims this is IP67 waterproof, and despite weighing four pounds, it does float on top of water, unless you're like me and you weight it down and force it to be submerged for 30 minutes, but it still comes out in fully functional working order. I don't know if this comes across in the video, but the RGB lighting effects are simple yet stunning. It makes the speaker grill appear to float slightly over the surface of the speaker. I prefer that speaker manufacturers put contrasting ink on the buttons just to make them easier to read and use, but Altec Lansing has chosen not to do that. The buttons themselves are fairly standard, but this is the lighting mode control, and this is your QI charging pad. Now, when I first saw this, I thought this was to charge the speaker, but it isn't. This is to charge your phone. In addition to the USB-C charging port, Underneath this rubber plug is a USB-A power bank port. You could also use this to charge your phone or some other external device. As for mounting options, they include this hardened plastic ring, which you can use to attach this included carabiner. You also get two quarter inch mounting holes and two handlebar mounts because it's kind of a beast. The Hydroboom has dual one and a half inch tweeters and a three inch woofer for a total of 32 watts of power. The Hydroboom has a 2000 milliamp hour battery and can take about four hours to charge. Altec Lansing claims you'll get up to 16 hours of playback. Now that can be affected by the type of music you're listening to and the volume at which you're listening to it. However, in my testing, I found that I could only bring this up to about 75% volume 
before I started getting distortion on the deep bass. I did have problems with resonance frequencies on the deep bass. I felt like the speaker could handle it below 75% volume, but still the case itself was vibrating. However, unless you are listening to techno or rap, you may never encounter these resonance frequencies. I forgot to tell you about the hands-free calling option of the Hydroboom. The person that I was talking to sounded fine to me, but she said that I had a weird buzzing in my voice. I am going to give the Hydroboom a four out of five star rating, simply because with a name like Hydroboom, I expected it to handle bass better. It's good, but I just expected more. That's it for part two of my Altec Lansing speaker roundup. Let me know in the comments below which of those speakers you would choose. And thanks for stopping by.